and you've created this multi-million dollar beauty conglomerate, let's say. And so the the evolution that you've had in the last couple of years has been remarkable. Mm-hmm. I think it kind of be a, it would be a really good case study to tell, you know, our audience is like, how did that progress look like? Let's take us back to when you were, were in the women's shelter till now. Like, what did that look like? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, there's like the answer that I give all the time, like the Coles notes of like, so I was in the shelter. And I, to be honest, it wasn't the first time I lived in a shelter. Um, a lot of people think that that's where the story starts. Mm. It's when I was 21, I was living in a shelter. I um, had a laptop in $15 and I photoshopped a catalog of makeup that didn't exist um, by teaching myself how to use um, Photoshop on YouTube. And then downloaded like a Pirate Bay version of Photoshop. Thank you, Pirate Bay. <laughs> you guys rock. And um, yeah, and then made this catalog and then shopped this catalog of makeup that didn't exist around to local boutiques and made enough pre-sales to then actually bootstrap this company and build and it. And no from- one taught you this whole idea. No. This is all like innate, natural completely natural. I mean, I dropped out of school when I was 14. Mm. Um, and I was a competitive ice dancer at that really? time. Wow. Yeah. So I was, uh, like figure skating, like figure skating. Wow. I did pairs. Oh, wow. And, um, my partner and I skated like 10 hours a day. Mm. And I thought for sure I was training to be on the Olympic team. And so I thought for sure I'm going to be on the Olympics. And then when my Olympic career dies down, I will be Belle from Beauty and the Beast on Disney and Ice. Naturally. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And I will skate on cruise ships and that's my life yep. and um and so I didn't think much about it to leave school when I was 14 um but that's kind of where my education stopped so I mean there is some things that I I crack jokes about it now like there's certainly some things that I can tell that my education is like but but my worry, emotional I, I never finished high school okay they, they kicked me out in grade nine okay yeah. so we're like there we go um so yeah and I think that's also I was mentioning before like I don't really like read books and stuff because I'm I'm really slow at it and um but what I have really become good at because of some of the challenging experiences I've had in my life. Um, like I mentioned, uh, at 21 wasn't the first time I lived in a shelter. The first time I lived in a shelter, I was six months old. And so hmm. um, I grew up in and out of, you know, some challenging relationships and challenging situations with my family uh, for, you know, my whole life. And I was 14. I left school. By the time I was um, had just turned 17, I was living on the other side of the country on my own. And um, – And yeah, so through all of those experiences, I was able to have a really solid understanding of who I was and a really good understanding of how to follow my gut and how to listen to my gut and really good at emotional intelligence. And that, I think some of those skills are incredibly important skills as an entrepreneur. And so that really drove to just, you know, kind of figure things out as you go and, um, yeah, so I photoshopped this catalog and it was just something that came naturally. And in fact, I was just distracting myself from my reality. It's nothing that I anticipated I was building a business. But then I built that from, you know, $15 and a laptop in the shelter to a $15 million company in five Holy years. Fuck. That's amazing. Yeah. And so you you mentioned you, you originally didn't start it off as a business? No, it's not like I was in the shelter thinking like, all right, this is my business plan. This is what I'm going to do. Like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was. Mm. Um, I was simply just distracting myself with from what my reality was. And I was interested in makeup. I did some makeup um, for like weddings and things like that for friends. You saw this catalog of makeup. Mm -hmm. You photoshopped it and you put it online. Yeah. Like whatever website. Uh, Well, it was like, I think it was... um, Well, I actually physically got some printed, um, which were like $10 a catalog from, oh, what was it called at the time? It changed names now, but I think it's like ISSU or something like that. Like it's free digital online catalogs. And so it made it really easy to like have this digital catalog and copy the link and send it off to people. And was the company called EBO at that time? No. Ah. And actually, this is part of the story I don't share nearly as much. Um, but it was actually called Karma Face Cosmetics. Karma Face Cosmetics. Okay. Karma Face. Yeah. Like what goes around comes yeah, around. Yeah, like yeah, karma. Yeah. Karma. Oh, got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was clever. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. so. And um, the reason why I was in the shelter was because I was leaving a unhealthy relationship. I was leaving an abusive relationship. Mm. And um, when I was in the shelter um, – Shortly after that, I, ac- I actually left and 
I say this, like I'm really vulnerable about this because I think it's important to be honest about these things because often you get asked like, well, why did you stay? Mm. And, or people, you know, have a certain perception of how domestic violence is. And so I'm pretty honest about it that like after the shelter, I even went back um, and things got a lot worse. He ended up being arrested. And while he was in jail, he trademarked Karma Face Cosmetics. What? And in, from me. jail? He was he was on house arrest, ah, okay. um, w- awaiting his trial, and um, he trademarked Karma Face Cosmetics and sued oh, me for infringement. Jesus Christ! 